Despite kale's recent claim to fame as a popular superfood, kale has a long history with humankind. Grown by the Greeks and Romans, it eventually made its way to Europe. In Scotland, it was so widely cultivated and used that vegetable gardens became known as kale yards. And at one point in the 19th century, the word kale came to mean a meal itself, often the main meal. Cabbage, a kale relative, was bred in Northern Europe due to the long cold nights that favored development of heads, and it took kale's place of honor after the Industrial Revolution, when workers moved to cities without gardens. Transporting kale from farms became impractical, since kale, unlike cabbage, does not keep and travel well. Kale is a superfood, but could too much of a good thing be bad? Could eating too much kale make you sick? The answer is a bit complicated. Kale and other cruciferous vegetables are considered goitrogenic, that is, they can interfere with thyroid hormone synthesis, causing hypothyroidism, but only if eaten in excessive quantities. It is the dose that makes the poison, and only if there is an iodine deficiency. So don't worry, unless you're eating absurd amounts of kale every day. And there are ways of having your kale and eating it too. Cook it up, goitrogenic properties are dramatically lessened by cooking. Eat seaweed, it's high in iodine. Eat a Brazil nut, it is rich in selenium, which can support normal iodine levels. And finally, vary your greens. Eat kale one day, cucumber and lettuce the next, so on and so forth. Variety and moderation are key to good health. More importantly, remember, kale is a nutrition powerhouse, high in vitamins A, C, and K, minerals, and phytonutrients. Its use has even been linked to reduce cancer risk. So don't pass this green up, start growing and enjoying it today. For tips on growing your own food, check out the Suburban Homestead series, and don't forget to subscribe.